have the guts to be yourself. All right, you know, it's like here the saying right here, be yourself. Everyone else is already taken by, by Oscar Wilde, coincidence, okay? Um, no, it's true, it's like, have the guts to be yourself. And if you don't know who you are, besides playing a role, find out who you really are. Dr. Thomas Yuli is my guest on this episode of Inside Ideas, brought to you by 1.5 Media and Innovators Magazine. Thomas is the founder, managing director, and curator of Motivate to Be. He is a human business architect and coach for agile company and project transformation with more than 25 years of experience in various industries and organizations. His vision is to help business establish itself as a new global norm, normal within 10 years. He is currently accompanying Allianz Germany as an agile transformation coach. He is a regular speaker at conferences worldwide, including NASA, Global Congress of the Project Management Institute, Equality Lounge at the World Economic Forum, Corporate Social Responsibility Forum, his new book, Human Business, Living and Working in the Digital Age, will be published in November 2020. I was lucky and fortunate enough to receive a, uh, an advanced copy of that from the Health of Perlach and was able to review it and am in line with the thinking and the progressive nature of this book. It is only available in German right now, and we'll ask and find out if we can maybe uh, hear about an English version or copy coming in the near future. He is also the author of the internationally recognized reference book, Leadership Principles for Project Success, a CRC press out of New York City in 2011. Thomas holds a PhD in International Studies from the University of Miami, United States of America, and an MA in Economics from Washington University in St. Louis. In his spare time, he loves the outdoor activities of running, hiking, and climbing, skiing, and snowboarding. He holds a second Dan black belt in Taekwondo, practices Vinyasa Yoga, and loves to dance Tango uh, Argentino. Welcome to the show, Thomas. It's so good to have you here. Well, thank you so much for the kind words and introduction. Um, it's a great honor to be here with you. Uh, we know each other, and so I want to unpack this for my listeners. Well, our paths uh, have crossed a numerous amount of times, but we got the chance to speak in Davos at the at the forum, at the World Economic Forum. Um, uh, I believe it was in the, uh, somewhere in the open forum or in hotel as we were crossing paths and in, in, in the hallway, we spoke a little bit and then uh, we've seen each other at uh, different events and, and things around. Um, I was running around like crazy, uh, being busy, trying to, to promote our, our uh, future of work, uh, human business uh, models and, and uh, environment and, and kind of positive impacts on the world. And so uh, I'm, I'm glad that we, we got the chance to, to uh, have this podcast today and kind of let our listeners know what you've been involved in, what's going on. And, and um, uh, there's some interesting things happening. So during a pandemic, you're launching a book, you know, you're getting ready, or I, I don't even think we can call it the end of the pandemic yet now. And so that, that's got to be a challenge in and of itself. It probably was nice to, to prepare and, and get things ready during this pause um, to, to launch, a, do a book. But uh, how, how, how have you weathered this whole pandemic time? How has it been for you? Well, actually, was uh, well. First, I was shocked because uh, at that time I still was running my own business, and uh, I thought, okay, let's walk my own talk. Because in my book, I talk about reframing, you know, asking different questions. So I said, like, well, how can it be uh, an opportunity? And I thought, like, well, why don't I just start my own online dialogue, kind of like a podcast on love, life, and work in the digital age. And so I had like a, a few sessions, you know, where we talked about uh, we had subjects like um, 
boys don't cry, men do. We talked about, of course, the human business. We talked about why the future is female, for example. We talked about the death of human resources um, versus human recognition. It's a number of topics. And so it was actually a time of uh, focusing on the essentials and also reflecting what really matters. That's beautiful. So also during this time of, you know, the Corona, uh, um, a lot of the digital age technology and um, things came out. I mean, you, I guess you're, you're doing this type of a podcast, but you know, everybody shifted to working from home, working online, kind of having these online meetings. Um, and it kind of, it really shot up these conferences, online seminars like mushrooms and, um, there, there's this question that ties nicely uh, to your book and, and to thoughts. Can we still be human in the digital age? Uh, is this digitization taking over our lives? Um, people I speak speak to, they always uh, say, damn, I'm working a lot more now than I did before. I, I look forward to going to office and only giving them eight hours a day. And instead now I'm 12 to 14 hours a day i'm not even taking lunch breaks well i believe actually the digital age is uh it's not really a threat to us humans uh instead i see it as a, a wonderful chance for us to become human again um you know there are, there are two questions which are also raised in the book uh, which can make all the difference i can ask what will the future look like especially you know in the digital age with all the technology and what have you that's one thing. And when we ask this question, we have to react. We become victims or we become objects of change. Or we can ask the question, how do we want to live in the digital age? I mean, basically the same question and yet completely different because it opens a creative space. We're no longer objects, but we are becoming agents of change. The difficult thing about this question is we have to know who we are and what we really want. Um, so we have to move away from the notion we are a human resource, actually we're a human being. And I think uh, the pandemic actually has taught us more than ever before, or it reminded us that uh, social relationships do matter and we have to look after our own health and it, it's very important. And then asking the question, well, not only how can we get through this, but how do you want to live afterwards? And I think what, what I've seen, what I've observed was that quite a few people, they, they spent more time with their family. They spent more time out in nature. Uh, other business things, issues became less important. And I think this, uh, if this is kind of like what we can expect uh, in the near future, I think it's a good sign. But we have to start with us. I, I totally uh -huh. agree. I'm, I'm aligned with you. And it's really bubbling to the surface more and more. Um, every single day and over the years. Uh, when we last saw each other this year at Davos at the forum, um, boy, the year started out with a bang. It was a, de uh, a decade of action, a lot of activities and momentum, and also a big shift in this more human, more environmental concerns, more uh, sustainability, more you know, awareness uh, centered, You know, let's take a deep breath, let's get aligned, let's uh, make sure that we're thinking in the right in, uh, direction. And at Davos, um, Tristan Harris was there uh, uh, speaking about the Center for Humane Technology and talking about how technology really shouldn't be the, the Facebooks and Googles and you know, all this stealing of data or using us as a, as a human capital, so to say, but more moving in the shift, how can we make it more humane and and, and, and change the way we're going. So I really, I, I, I like that as well. The, I, I wanna kind of go back and have you even unpack more because you only tickled the surface. Um, I, I wanted to know how you've weathered this pandemic and you kind of touched upon it. You've been working on this obviously to write a book and to be involved in this and this thought process of you know, human business. Um, for a long time, which should give you some resilience or some sustainability or some kind of a, a, you know, a preparedness for the future of work, the future of, uh, of where we're at now. Um, 
did it do any of that? Did, were you able to weather this time better? And were, were, uh, uh, did, did people start reaching out to you like crazy and say, hey, <laughs> you've been talking or writing about this for a while or referencing us. Uh, now we're here. Holy hell, I'm not prepared, you know, uh, and looking to you for help. Or can, can, can you yeah. help us a little more there? Uh, well, it was kind of, well, yes, I did have a good pipeline of, of uh, potential customers, but then during, due to the pandemic, uh, they never reached a decision, so everything was uh, put on hold. And where I'm working right now, I do uh, try to implement, you know, the concepts, the, pr the principles of human business into large organizations. Uh, you can say one project at a time, even though on the executive level, I'm talking also with teams, etc. But um, now what, what, what I've learned, again, like what I mentioned earlier, um, in this pandemic and a crisis, um, we tend to look for quick solutions. We have the solution mindset. And I think people say, well, having a solution mindset is a good thing. Um, I, would, I dare to disagree. Because when we, people, when they have a solution mindset, they usually use the tools of the past. And they use the tools that have maybe even caused a crisis. So why do you want to use these, these tools again? Um, so we have to do something different. Um, the former Secretary of State of the United States, uh, Madeleine Albright, um, she explained, I think it was also, a, I don't know what speech it was. She said, well, we, have to we want to tackle problems of the 21st century. And we use our thinking of the 20th century and institutions of the 19th century. And there is a mismatch. So we have to do something different. So yes, we can go one step at a time using the old paradigm, or we ask the question again, how do we want to live? What's our vision? We have to know where we're coming from, but what's our vision? And once we have this vision, then we say, okay, what's the next step we can take? And then we can, real we can actually will realize there are so many things we can use and do in order to move this, this direction. And technology is one of these tools, you know, but you have to have a clear vision. And during the pandemic, it became to me, I mean, it's, it, to me, it was, you know, became more obvious how important this is. And as you, I think, well, I don't know sure if I mentioned it in, in, in the book, the working title of the book was Being Human in the Digital Age. Okay, so this is really the core. I mean, that's why human business, it's not just about business, it is about us and finding out who we really are and what we have become. So the pandemic, I think, was uh, kind of like a, a wonderful, um, how to say, invitation to reflect uh, where we are, we, we, where we want to go. The book really oh. nicely focuses on people. Uh, uh, be it employees, entrepreneurs, customers, or social environment, it stands for a new shared of, uh, of, of responsibility, corporate culture characterized by trust and respect. You know, and I really, I really like that in the book. Um, this uh, rediscovery that being human is essential. Um, that you know that when we're put in a lockdown position, there's not a digital solution out there that can keep your business running and afloat. It's those humans that in some respects have been turned into a number, robot pushing the same button, sending the same emails every day, um, you know, very rigid forms. Okay, now you send out this form and that, that those things don't keep your business running and afloat and moving forward, that there's that human aspect of it, that a lot of companies, a lot of organizations have over the years are like trying to be real efficient and, and you know, you've got to punch in, you've got to punch out, now it's time to go to lunch and now you can, you know, go on a break and there's not a lot of humanness in some of these organizations, but when it comes down to a crisis, um, or a pandemic or, or whatever else, we realize that the, the more humans, the more res, uh, the co corporate culture that you have, the, the better your business flows, the more profitable it is, the more your employees enjoy it, the more your, your business thrives and flourishes. And I've had others on the show before, um, Tim Leberecht, 
I'm friends with uh, Frederick Laloux. Tim Leberecht uh, wrote the book Business Romantic. Uh, Frederick Laloux uh, wrote uh, Regenerative uh, Reinventing Organizations. And, you know, and there's many other principles and thoughts in this direction of making, you know, hu more humane business, more social entrepreneurship, more human positive capital, because I mean, us humans are the capital that are the global citizen that drives, drives our world and the economies. It's not just uh, some robotic institution. And so I, that's what I got out of the book and that's what I've read. And then another thing is you quote some very interesting, wonderful people in the book and refer to certain, uh, certain uh, subject matter. And John Naisbitt is a futurologist, and you have a nice quote from him, which is nice. And he's uh, almost retired. I, I, I now will have uh, his wife, Doris Naisbitt, on the show and do a podcast with her coming up soon. And she's kind of taken over their work together, and they've been involved in the books and together for this for probably well over 40 years. And so um, it's really interesting that, you know, the wisdom of the past and the, the plan for the future of where we're going, how that's kind of finding this, I don't know if synergy is the right word, but this path and this roadmap of kind of the journey where a lot of humans are saying, this is really where we want to be. And there's more books, there's more thoughts, and there's more congruent. But I believe that your book, distinguishes in a big way even more than some of these others what's the action or what can we get there how can we it's a little bit different and i'd like you because only you can really unpack it for me and for me uh, having read it in in, in german um <clears throat> and then i do this automatic english translation and try to put it into the real world um i think i do it pretty good but I'd like you to unpack it. I think you could probably do it a little bit better. What this, um, what your objective, what your hope is, what's the journey or where do you want to kind of uh, enlighten us on, on where we should go or where the future of human business is going? Well, uh, that's, that's, uh, that's a good question. Huge question. How much time do we have? Um, Tons. Let's, start the, <laughs> let's start with the individual. Uh, like I said, when we, when we're building a human business it actually starts with us uh, where we have to find out okay what is it that motivates us uh, is it something that we envision or what we what is it that we like to envision and what can we what are our steps for where we can uh, what can we do then you invite other people you're, you're starting a dialogue you know what do they want you start uh, uh, a book I talk about the, the art of listening of generative listening having a true dialogue uh, where you co-create things, new things, you prototype new things. From there, you can go to say a project setting in a business set, business environment or in a social environment where you build prototypes and you have concrete results. And maybe from there, you can go to corporate level. And from there, you say, you can save the world. Um, you know, in the books, like, because people say, ask me, it's like, what's the target audience? And for whom is it Britain? And I'm answering, well, for, for all those who are interested in and uh, worry about the future and uh, want to shape our future, you know, but they lack maybe an orientation. And it all boils back down to us. And this is difficult, but hey, here we go. Um, regarding businesses, what we say, like I said, it's not really entirely new. And quite a few organizations have already started this journey uh, using. Um, you know, an agile transformation approach. And, and a couple of podcasts ago, you talked about agility. And um, it, it's wonderful, it's good not to focus on the company so much anymore and shareholder and on all this, uh, you know, a paradigm of the last century. And it's good to say, what does it take to delight our customer? That's wonderful. That's kind of, you can say people, that's just the why. One of the question is like, how do you get there? Well, and then we're talking about people, we're not talking about human resources. I call this happy workplace. If you build a happy workplace, you know, where people, um, they like to be in the area, they have a good time, they, it's, it's joy driven, it's, um, it's purpose driven. Um, people are 
find ways and means to unfold their potentials and their skills and talents uh, as building high performing teams. We have this, what I call a heavy workplace. And then the result is that you build business value, but not only focusing on short term profits, habits, but having a balance between short, mid and long term you know, re results. And plus, there is another, another aspect. I believe that every business has a social responsibility. That is not the people or the city or where they are located, but also the environment. So it's a holistic approach. And you have to look at all of these and you have to know, okay, what is it where you start with? That's in the agile world as the customer, then the how as the happy workplace and then the business. In the human business, I go a step further and say, well, now we want to, the, the purpose of, of human business is to generate value for and by humans because customers are humans. Then we have the, the, the workers, the employees, you know, we're all humans. Then it's society. So it's basically brought down to us. And this gives a different long-term perspective and orientation in a world which is rapidly changing. Uh, we don't know exactly what, where will we be in five years, but uh, hopefully we'll still be around and we still have a compass and that is generating value for us humans and uh, the planet. Um, on, on this one, one, one thing I'd like to add, um, I talked about the golden rule, which is like, you know, thousands of years old, you know, you treat the other uh, the way you like to be treated. And uh, Kim Palman, whom I met a couple of years ago, also at the World Economic Forum, um, she's, uh, she, she has become an ambassador of the golden rule. Um, her book, Imaginal Self, a wonderful book with lots of stories, where Mohammed Yunus, Al Gore, I mean, they share their stories. Um, she added a little thing and she said, the, the modified golden rule goes like this, treat the other person or treat the other and the planet the way you want to be treated. And I think this pretty much sums, sums it all up. I mean, the golden rule is more than just like a compass. I mean, you, and they say, well, can it be more concrete? Yeah, take the um, um, SDGs of the United Nations. Um, we have orientations, no matter where, I mean, quite a few places, and it's a great, uh, great place to start. I absolutely love that. So The Imaginal Cell is a wonderful book. Kim Pullman, I'll make sure to put that in the show notes about our, our, our discussion. And uh, Kim is Paul Pullman's uh, wife, uh, a former CEO of Unilever, and now he's gone on to create a wonderful organization, Imagine, which is a fabulous as well, as well foundation and for business leaders and also sits on the International Chamber of Commerce and the World Business Council for Sustainable Development, a lot of other positive things. But I really like that that book. I was also in, in a documentary by Jim Raketa, a German photographer turned um, uh, director, where Mohammed Yunus, who's in the book as well as Al Gore, um, uh, were in, was in the documentary as well. As, as an ex expert. So that alignment and that thinking, that direction of those people is so, so beautiful. In, in your um, book, you talk about the 10 design principles for human business and purpose of a company. And I don't know if we wanna tease because most of, most of my listeners, there are quite a few that speak German, but the majority speak English. Um, we'll have to wait anyway till the English version comes out but I don't know if you're willing to release a couple, a couple of your secrets and touch on, on some of those 10 principles kind of in, to get them in the direction of, of what your, your thought process and your thinking is. It's almost like a manifesto in, in a lot of yeah. respects. And, and uh, my, my um, first book as well, uh, my opening statement uh, is about the golden rule. So uh, it's really amazing how aligned uh, our, our direction and thinking is, and, and, and for our listeners, it's really unique. Um, it's not just it's not just a herd mentality or crowd or or you know um, preaching to the choir. It's the shift that we're seeing in humanity. I look at it at a much more cellular level, where I uh, think of you know 
I have a certain amount of time on this planet and I have adult children and I have grandchildren. And I think of how do I want to live out these precious moments in these days of my life? What kind of future do I want to live in? And who do I want to be surrounded by? I want to be surrounded by other human beings who are moving in the same direction and care about people and planet and uh, uh, want to be crew members on this spaceship Earth and take us into resilient, desirable futures, not just for me for the short term I'll be here, for future generations, my children, my grandchildren, and others that I probably don't know and will never meet so that they can enjoy a beautiful world as well in harmony with our planet. And so I, I, I also really strive on that. And it's, it's this principle that, you know, um, to, to be sustainable means to sustain oneself for multiple generations, whether that's an individual, a business, a, to have the resources, to have the monies, to have the security and shelter, the Maslow's hierarchy of needs, bottom layers, the physiological needs to survive. And so I, I really like the concept that uh, <clears throat> Tim Lieberecht has is I would like to have a business romance or those things that I do in this world um, around business or my daily activities to invest my time. I wanna be surrounded pe by people not only that I love, but people that I can trust and be on this journey with together that they're watching out for me, that we're in this, going in the same direction instead of me feeling like they just wanna turn me into a number. And if I, I have to account for my time and, and they have to calculate that, you know, my productivity is, is uh, good for the company or that, that it's much bigger purpose, a much grander vision. And uh, not only is it humane, but it's one that's really enjoyable and fun. You can say, damn, I, I love to leap out of bed and go to work because that's the most fabulous organization ever. And I enjoy my colleagues. Instead, I, I've been in many situations over the years. I've been walking down the street and with a friend or with someone and I go, oh my God, there's somebody from work. Hurry, let's go the other way. I don't want to see him. He's a, such a jerk. And, and, and they're miserable at work. I say, what? What are you wasting your time on this precious earth? Uh, you know, surrounding yourself, doing what you don't like. And, and, and we've seen it, that job dissatisfaction's up. And, and, um, and, and so there is a better model. And that's why I love the, the, your 10 principles. I love you, what you've, you've presented here and want to just hear more about that. Yeah, well, there are the 10 principles. I'm, I'm absolutely you know, happy to, to share them and uh, make sure that I, I sent you a PDF maybe, and then we can find a way that people can download this, this information. And I, I think it's pretty straightforward. Well, okay, I, I've composed them, but you know, um, there, there are 10 principles or five, five categories. The first one is talk about the purpose of, of a company, the purpose of a business. And I have already mentioned that the first principle is like, okay, we, the human being, we're in the center, okay? It's, it's about generating sustainable value for and by humans, people. That's the first one. Um, and it's not just like for, and it, it's like the environment, it's like the individual environment, it's the, the happy work that I talked about, it's the business, it's society, it's environment. That's the first principle. And uh, talking about sustainability, it's not the short-term value generation, it's long term. So this is these are the first two principles. That is the, the, the human uh, being is in the center of our attention, and then talk about sustainable value generation for and by people. Um, then we have the second category. It's about collaboration. Uh, principle three is um, well, we have human business. How should I say promotes an, an environment which is open, which is diverse, um, and inclusive. Um, and um, this is being reflected in the, the, the workforce. Uh, Operation, I think, is the right word. Yes. And then we have the fourth principles to we'll talk about uh, cross-functional self-organizing teams, uh, small teams. Uh, this, you can say, for those um, um, of the listeners who, um, who are familiar with Agile, this is like a given, small cross-functional teams and self-organizing teams. Um, the third category, performance, um, and the principles five and six. Um, principle five is that human business trusts the employees. 
I mean, it, it trusts and trusts and respects and, and, and treats the people like people, not like resources. And I think this is like one of the key, how should I say, key elements of human business. We're not talking about human resources. And Agile sometimes they always talk about human resources. No, we're talking about human beings. Okay, by the way, it's like, if, you, if I'm treated and I see myself as a human resource, then I would have to compete with other resources such as computers. I'm not sure if I want to compete with computers and AI and what have you. Most likely I will lose. So human business treats and respects people as people. And um, there is a business driver, uh, which is principle six. The business driver of human business is joy. Okay, it's not money, it's joy. And uh, as a side note, as a footnote, uh, those of uh, you who like to learn more about it, uh, Richard Sheridan, the, the co-founder of Mental Innovations in, in Auburn, Michigan, he has written a, a wonderful book called Joy Inc. And he describes how his company is actually built on this principle that the business driver is joy. Um, then we have the fourth category, learning innovation, uh, principle Seven talks about, well, we, uh, human business is an open and a learning organization. So um, you actually well, welcome change. I mean, there's a wonderful opportunity to, to learn things, you try new things, innovation is not, is being lived. And uh, principle eight is you don't hold all the ideas to yourself, you actually share them. And, you know, it's, it's, it's open innovation. The more you share, the more you can get back. And um, so it's, definitely promotes open innovation, for example. And last but not least, uh, delivery of results. Uh, principle nine talks about, well, profits are important, but they are the result of, you know, you know, of good, good work. You know, it's not the, the, the purpose of companies not making profits, and uh, it's a result. Profits can help too, it's a tool, you can say. And um, you deliver, you know, an iterative incremental fashion, which is very agile, um, for, you know, again. And last, last but not least, human business lives in a circular economy. And this is where the sustainability comes in again. It's not like we, we only focus on, on our business. We are part of, of a network. We're part of society and we are part of of our environment, so we have to care for it. And if we can promote a certain economy and certain business where we don't have waste, um, that's a, it's actually, it's, it saves us lots and lots of money. Um, it takes some effort to get there, but it's actually from a business sense, it makes sense. I mean, it, it's, it's, you can say it's rational. Um, get, however, the prerequisite is that you have to leave the short-term thinking behind and you balance it with the mid-term and long-term thinking. Uh, then I think that's good. So these are the 10 principles and uh, com combine them with the, the value proposition of um, that you uh, want to delight the customer, not just satisfy the customer, delight customer. You build um, a happy workplace and you ensure um, a sustainable business value plus the Kaizen, the continuous self-improvement mechanism, um, I think you have a solid foundation for business to evolve. I love it. And oh. it's, it's, it's <clears throat> so true. I thank you for unpacking those, those 10 and, and uh, the categories that they fall in. Um, I'd, I'm obviously uh, read the book and, and aware of, um, of those, but the reason, you know, I wanted you on the show, the reason uh, that it's so important is one you right in the beginning of our conversation you talk about corporate social responsibility uh, or social responsibility and then uh, which is is really evolved into environmental social governance today so the the, the beginnings of it years ago was uh, HSE health safety or social um, environment or uh, executives then compliance and then corporate social responsibility and now it's uh, environmental social governance then you talk about sustainability german nachhaltigkeit you talk about 
resilience, you talk about the sustainable development goals, you talk about the new models of the future of business, human capital in some respects, but that human worth, that human respect, that uh, human humane centered uh, uh, business. And um, you wrote the book, you're well-versed in it, you've been in this area, but believe it or not, a, a lot of organizations, a lot of people, they haven't even heard of the sustainable development goals. They, you know, we're five years into it and are like, SDGs, what's that? Or, or what's that pin? I get asked all the time, what's the pin that you're wearing? Things like that. And, and people don't know. And, and the proof is what I kind of just said be, uh, uh, before is the, the global surveys, the happiness index, the joy index is probably the lowest it's been ever in our world, especially during this pandemic time and uh, is really rough. And it's not just joy of whether you like to be at home with your family, that joy is really has a big part of where we spend the majority of our time at work at different companies and organizations. Job dissatisfaction is pretty high globally around the world. And so if it was bet different, if people knew about your principles, if corporations and organizations were implying them, then I don't think that data or those studies that we see going on around the world would be so high of dissatisfaction or people, you know, saying, I, I don't want to see my colleague when I'm walking down the road. So I think it's important that we unpack that and that the humane portion of those companies and those individuals um, start to uh, mimic and speak about this to their bosses, to their employers, say, you know, let's reinvent our organization. Let's get more humane. Let's quit being so robotic or uh, let's let's change our organization to operate in the future, to operate in this desirable, resilient, beautiful, sustainable futures. And that's kind of, you know, also what the SDGs really are roadmap to get us to 2030. So the way you've unpacked that, the way the book is, um, is so vital. Please, those of you who read German, um, get out there and, and get it. Um, human business. I, I want to ask though, do you have plans for an English copy? Are you working on it? Your thoughts? Yeah, on well, um, I'd like to have an English copy, uh, a book out there. Actually, uh, initially I thought like, well, should I write in English or in German? And my intuition said like, no, first write it in German and then we'll know from me later in English. Um, I, I still need a, a, an English uh, publisher or an American publisher, international publisher and uh, then it can be translated and modified for the you know more international um, um, audience because there are some examples there mostly from the uh, german-speaking uh, countries you know about depression and what have you uh, but it would be wonderful so if any of, um, of those listeners viewers you know know a good um, a publisher let me know and uh, let's talk uh, because right. i think it's, it's very power very very powerful to have let's get this message out there and um, yes, there should be in English and hope, maybe French and Spanish, who knows what. I, I don't know how to get there by my vision, as you said at the beginning, my vision is to help establish human business as a new global norm within 10 years. And this is the concept of human business. I mean, the principles can change. I mean, you can't talk about conscious capitalism or what have you, but the main idea about generating value for and by people and uh, having the idea of a circular economy or the golden rule, um, you know, imagine how the world will be like if that's a new norm. I mean, there could still be some traditional business out there, fine, but um, when you go to the, uh, to the university, this is what they're teaching, not like short-term thinking. And um, I think it's, 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 it's up to us what we make out of it. I agree. Um, there's a good um, publishing company called Gabala here in Germany. They, they might uh, help you out getting in English, especially since you already have the German available. Um, but I know my listeners will reach out to you and I'm sure others will help. And so we can all have a nice version in English. And then I want you to do an audio version so that you can speak it in for all of us who are uh, currently stuck in the busy rat race and, and our eyes are failing us to always read um, books. Uh, I want to 
ask you probably, I guess, the first big question, and that is, are you a global citizen? And how would you feel about the removal of all borders, walls, and limitations, and divisions of humanity? And what are your feelings or your understandings of this? Well, yes, I do believe I'm, I'm, I see myself as a global citizen. I mean, I love traveling. I live, you know, abroad for a number of years, including the U.S., um, and just love it. Uh, and the different cultures, learning, sharing, and uh, it's, 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 it's great. I mean, it's, it's one world. It's one planet. And the challenges we are facing, especially environmental challenges, there are no borders. You know, uh, look at the, the pandemic right now. I mean, they, they, you know, the various countries in Europe, they have different rules. As if the virus starts right at the border and checks in, checks out. Um, it's kind of silly, no. Um, do we need something like a, a global government? No, I, I don't think so, because there's always a risk of bureaucracy. And, um, but, uh, no, one world, let's have a dialogue. We don't have to, have to agree on everything, but we have to listen. We have to understand, you know, the various needs and then just go from there. Um, a true dialogue opens spaces. And um, actually, if you look at the businesses, business world already, it's more open than governments are. You know, um, when I was working on my, my PhD um, in international relations, international studies, it, it's, it's a given, it's a network, it's a community. It's no longer country A versus country B. Uh, it could very well be at the capital, some politicians believe it this way. Uh, but no, I mean, it's like you have to look at the, 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 all these, these the different networks how everything fit together. It's more than complex. That's why we have to have this dialogue. I love it. I love it. Yep. Thank you for that answer. Um, you feel in this time of a pandemic or even before um, any kind of rise of uh, a collapse or impending collapse or extinction of humanity or the current civilization framework that we are, whether globally or Europe or the United States that we're operating on that it's the time Black Lives Matters, natural catastrophes, loss of biodiversity, pandemics, blaming this nation, blaming that nation. Do you feel any unease or, or a rise of something? There is an unease, yet there is a rise. I mean, um, and due to the internet, it's, 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 it's you know, very international, it's global, um, and, the, and the risk of fake news and what have you. Um, it depends, okay. I think when we when we watch the news, we have to get the impression everything is getting worse. Okay, um, let's look at starvation, for example. Or oh, it, it's it's worse than ten years ago. No, it's not. We're making great progress, but it's easier to sell bad negative stories than positive stories. So uh, you know, I'm, I'm you can say I'm an optimist. No, I think I'm a realist. You know, and uh, let's talk more about positive stories. And see how how make how big a difference it can make. It's up to us to become true storytellers. It's up to us. You can turn off the TV when, when you know uh, watching the news. This is actually what I did uh, during the uh, uh, first lockdown in Germany, and and in March. I, after a week, I thought like I, I can't handle this anymore. I just whenever the news was, you know, I just turned off the TV. I thought like I don't need it, you know, because they all talk about all the negative. All, you know, it's like when I talk to my neighbors. You know, to my friends, it's, it's friendship, it's community. We helped each other. And when you see in a crisis during the pandemic, how many people helped each other, no matter where you went, this is the true essence of humanity. Okay, governance, yes, can help. But the true essence is, is us. There is uh, uh, this Dutch writer, uh, the, the German title is uh, In Grunde Gut, it's a bestseller, but he talks, I don't know the English title right now. Um, he talks about actually about the positive side of us, which is the natural side. And I'm coming back to the, to, to the, uh, to the book, when I ask, okay, what, what, where can we start the journey to learn, do something new? And what do you get kids? We learn to, we have unlearned to play. We have actually been trained to be functioning resources. This works fine, everything's fine, but we are learned to play. 
Um, so let's be more open. Let's be more curious. Let's be open to make mistakes, and you know, let's talk about it and, and let's see where where it leads. Um, all of us have, have made this journey of innovation, um, which is called we learned to walk. A, a, a baby or a child learning to walk falls down on average up to 300 times before he or she makes the first step, take the first step. And the, the, good, the interesting thing is like when a kid falls, falls down, he or she does not say it's your fault. So besides they can't speak, not yet, you know. Maybe they may cry, um, they say, okay, where am I? And they try again. And maybe they fall again, they do something different until they actually mastered it. Let's be more human. Maybe we, we have to play some more and um, we, it doesn't have to be perfect. We just have to be innovative and learn. I totally agree. I think that's a, that's a beautiful way of um, answering it. And thank you so much for um, your thoughts on this. I'm going to throw you a, a curveball and give you the hardest question that I have for you today. And that's really the burning question, WTF. And a lot of people are like, oh, no, he's going to start swearing. It's really not the swear word, although we have been asking that this year many times. Uh, it's, it's what's the future? Oh, uh, the future. Well, uh, the future is human business, the new global norm. It's, it's a wonderful place for all of us to prosper, to uh, work and live together and to unfold our true potential in a positive uh, way and live in, um, in harmony with, uh, with nature. And uh, we can use technology and digital tools to get us there faster. So I'm not afraid of the future, just the opposite. Um, I can say, well, I wish I were like 20 years younger uh, so I can do even more, but um, no, I'm quite excited about the future. Uh, it's one of the risk. I see more chances than risk. That's, 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 I love that. That's probably the fastest answer I've ever received to that question because <laughs> I ask all my guests and you did it so well. So, but I, because of that, I'm going to ask you <clears throat> one extra question that I, that I hear out of that. Does that mean that you yourself have a pretty good vision or you can kind of visualize what it will look and feel like in that future is, is is that what makes it so easy for you to answer or, is it, or how, how did you get upon that? Is it something that you can clearly see or how can you answer that question so quickly? Is it because you've already got a good feeling of what, what it's going to feel and be like to be in that future? Maybe I have thought about it already and uh, quite for a long time, which, which is true. And I do have a vision and, uh, of you know, what I've just described. And one of the reasons I, I wrote this book, even though I still don't consider myself as the expert, you know, in, in this area, I'm just like an explorer and I'm, I'm a traveler. And do I know how to, how we get there? Uh, I have some ideas, but do I know exactly? No, I just take one step at a time and see what I can do this week and the week after. And, and, and I learn and I, and I fail and that, that, that's fine. Uh, but yes, I do have a, you know, relatively clear vision and I share it. And when you, I mean, if you talk about like, imagine you working in the same environment and Joy is the driver, the business driver. Would you like to work there? And they say, tell me more. That's usually they, they, you know, what, they, what they say. When I'm at Davos and say, uh, they say, what are you doing? Well, and I'm saying, I'm a human business architect. The first question is like, cool, what are you doing? Tell me more. What's a human business? So there is a keen interest, sincere interest in about more about us. We're tired, we're depressed of running in a, in a, in a, you know, in a hamster wheel. We have to get out of it. And we have to be at the uh, steering wheel. It's about us. No follow-up question to that. that, was, <laughs> that was, you got the right answer. Ding, 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 ding. You win the prize. So that was super. Um, I want to go now into uh, <clears throat> really... Uh, and, I, and I'm probably going to put you on the spot a little bit, but, you know, um, what do you think the holdup is for people not to transition to this model, this, uh, to, 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 to make that transition? What's the hesitation? Uh, do we need to set up a, a, a workshop or a day in, in Davos and go through, go through this? I mean, what, what, 
uh, uh, what do you think, where are the next steps or what do we need to do to, to say, here's the proof in the pudding or, or let us let you experience it and then present the results, you know, yeah. on the world stage. Well, that would be pretty cool. Um, I, I think first of all, people don't mean, some, some of them are still stuck in the old paradigm and maybe they, are, they have no clue how to get there. Uh, so let's, let's do this challenge. Let's see if we can find enough people together uh, prior to the World Economic Forum next year, which will be in Luzern, Switzerland, and have a workshop for two or three days and uh, where we talk about some um, pressing issues people are interested in, could be environmental issues, societal issues, what have you. I mean, something they care about. And let's build some concrete projects there where their heart is in it which kind of we can build little human business projects and who knows maybe a startup or some new initiative not blah 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 but concrete action items we want to follow up i mean those people who would be in this workshop they would have the capacity to follow up so and could should be cross-functional cross-generational students as well as you know um, managers as well as you know, like uh, who knows unemployed uh, artists and, and and see what we can up can come up with and then then um, present the results at some of the venues at, at the world economic forum and start a dialogue and the tools you know which i'm also describing in the book they're very very simple uh, but maybe that's why because it's they can be very powerful but it's not an agenda, we say step one, step two, step three. There is plenty of room, there's plenty of space for failure. There's plenty of, or in other words, there's plenty of space for new ideas to emerge and innovation take place. Um, so yeah, when, let's see if we can do this uh, uh, one or two, well, two or three days prior to, uh, to Luzern and then find a, a way to present the results and challenge the audience um, to, to join us. And maybe you know it's maybe they can help um, find some of these initiatives. How cool would this this be? And then a year later, in Davos, present the sustainable results and see where we got from there. Because we it's, it's Davos. I love Davos. I've been there I think seven or eight times. Great initiatives, lots of ideas. But the question is like, how sustainable are these ideas? I'd like to see some more positive stories. And going back. Say, by the way, this is what we have. And if they like, they can follow us, uh, you know, through platform and see uh, what we can do. And, and, you know, they can join the team. So it should be self-organizing. Uh, it's up to the audience what we can make out of it. So I think let's do this. We'll, we'll add all the links in, in the show notes and description and in your biography when we post it so that we can get people's feedback and see who's interested. Um, do you, uh, I, I definitely believe that we should do it and we should uh, uh, move forward. The, you, you brought up something very interesting. So normally uh, the World Economic Forum, the forum is in Davos this year or next year. It will be in Lucerne uh, uh, um, foreboding any other, other catastrophes or, or things that would stop it which is uh, there, there's also already these growing pains a little bit with Davos or has been for a few years now, uh, the amount of people that come to such a small space and, and rooms and, and costs and things. And so Lucerne, I think will be a, a, a nice wake up. Maybe there will be an expansion to you know, a bigger world stage, um, more inclusive, more open to um, <clears throat> the future of work, the future of business leaders. And um, we're, we might see some new things come out of there that, that this whole um, practice that we're involved in evolves much, much bigger and better than we could have imagined. So I definitely think that it's also a better, easier stage for us to do something with human business uh, um, uh, in Lucerne than it would be in Davos uh, for a lot of people that just the economy of scale is just not feasible always. That having been said, today um, uh, was also a big launch for, for the form. They um, uh, released when uh, Fourth Industrial Revolution, Klaus Schwab's book and, and some new things, they released the transformational maps on, on the, the form page, but now they've released some actual 
really cool things for systems thinking, dynamic modeling, more social, uh, environmental social governance, but also more human technology or humane technology into their, their platform. And it's right on the homepage of, of the World Economic Forum. And that is these transformational maps. Now, uh, whatever individuals or businesses can join and actually create their specific transformational map for that topic, their, for their business, their organization for one, but then specifically drill down on what all the facets, what that complex system is that your organization addresses, touches upon, how, how many lives it influences and, and get that data in a specific transformational map for your organization, which is kind of more a step in this, not only uh, complexity science, but systems thinking and dynamic model, but actually making it more personalized, making it more humane, getting us down to the, the real things. I mean, the, the, the reason why I was so excited about it uh, when it very first came out was released on the website, the transformational maps is not only Klaus talk about it in his book, um, but for the simple fact that the entire world at that same time, the UN, the World Economic Forum, the WTO and other international organizations in 2018 all made this switch to systems thinking, dynamic modeling, and providing the tools for us as individuals to do something with it and, and think in a different way. And the reason why, and, and this is what I want, kind of want to unpack and, and get to the bottom of, is humanity has a real hard time thinking linear and lateral. We, you know, uh, our, we think that's the only way we can think. Uh, and we also get into these silos or this linear and lateral way of thinking to solve our global grand challenges. And it does not work. It has failed us time and time again. And finally, in 2018, they said, hey, we need to switch in order to solve global grand challenges, in order to be more effective, to be more humane. We need to embrace complexity and systems thinking. And they've created these tools that let us see the big ripple effect, the big picture of what all the systems uh, of our world are connected. And the results that we're seeing so far is those organizations who have switched to these models and those who are, are addressing the complex uh, systems facets of, of a problem are really seeing some positive results and returns. And so, uh, the, you know, just to touch upon Lucerne, World Economic Forum, what, what new things are coming and where we're going. And like I said, last year, Tristan, Tristan uh, Harris from uh, uh, Center for Humane Technologies. He was, you know, he's also very aligned with what you're speaking about and, and others. Let's take it to that next step. Let's really make humanity better, which is our integration with environment more symbiotic, more symbiotic earth um, so that we can really have this beautiful future to live in and have that vision like you so eloquently have uh, when you answered my question. I have um, three more uh, questions for you and they're more for my listeners or guests. They're sustainable takeaways for my listeners that I want you to depart to them. Another free gift, I'm making you give away your whole portfolio and what you've been working on to, to, to us um, and my listeners uh, that they can take and apply into their lives. So. The first one is, if there was one message that you could depart to the to our listeners, um, a sustainable takeaway that had the power to change their lives, what yeah. would it be? Have the guts to be yourself. Or you know, it's like here the saying right here, be yourself. Everyone else is already taken by, by Oscar Wilde. Well, coincidence, okay? Um, no, it's true, it's like, have the guts to be yourself. And if you don't know who you are, besides playing a role, find out who you really are. What should young innovators who wanna get into leadership fields, who wanna get into coaching, who wanna get into more humane businesses, be thinking about if they are looking for ways to make a real impact? <laughs> That's a tough one. Um, true leadership 
and they have to understand true leadership is not about uh, your ego. True leadership is about serving others. So uh, become a good listener. Maybe that's a good start. You know, um, practice dialogues and uh, be open to make mistakes and uh, be bold. Um, and there are so many wonderful, you know, communities worldwide uh, which follow this track. Uh, you know, travel, uh, never ever forget to play. It's not just about work. It's not about, you know, career. It's, it's about if you really want to make an impact, okay, you know what? Help your neighbor, the next person you meet and see how you can help that person. But in order to help the other person, you have to know what their needs are. That means you have to listen. You have to have an open mind, open heart, open soul. This is what Otto Shama says. And see what impact you can make. The last one is, what have you experienced or learned in your professional journey to date that you would have loved to know from the start? Say, oh my gosh, I wish I would have known this 20, 30 years ago. My life would be so much different. I'll tell you, for me, it was, I wish I would have started much earlier. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think it's about the illusion that they have these others. It's just like comes for me intuitively. I don't know. I, I, I haven't planned this because I didn't expect this question. I think it's really the illusion of having to please others and compromising my true self. Um trying to prove something to other people. And uh, this is, you know, this is very, very personal. It's not so much professional, you can say, but I think this would have made a, a huge difference. And learning to um, love myself. It's not egotism, it, this is different. You know, um, you know acknowledging my, my many imperfections and loving these imperfections and uh, be more open to learn and make mistakes. Be you know bolder in this respect. It's very similar to Bren Brown's "Be Vulnerable." You know that vulnerability in some respects. It is, and that's a tough one. Um, you know, that's like the, the, like this, this, this chapter: you know, "Boys don't cry, men do." Yeah. You know, I wish I had cried more when I was a child. I wish I had um, a better access and acknowledgement of my own emotions, how I felt. Uh, I wish I had, you know, be more open about it. Um, and it would have made um, a huge difference, yeah, for myself, but for my immediate environment. And therefore, I think I would have uh, grown, you can say, much faster. But do I have regrets? Regrets don't lead you anywhere. So therefore, no, I do not have regrets. You know, I am where I am, and I think that's the perfect time, perfect um, place. So I think from here, it's like hopefully a more open, more interesting journey. I love that. Thank you so much. I am done with all my prodding and prying questions, but uh, before we say goodbye, I just want to ask, is there anything you want to ask or discuss with me, and is there anything that during our podcast now that you didn't get a say or that you would like to depart to our listeners and let them know or something that, that, that absolutely you wanted to make sure we talked about? Well, there are so many talk, things we can talk about. I just hope that, you know, we'll have a chance again to do this little project there and, and build a network of, say, you know, project accelerators or, you know, making, uh, making an impact that would be wonderful to, to uh, give a little impulse you know, and uh, because there's not much, I, I cannot do everything, you know. Um, so, no, I really want to thank you for, for giving me the opportunity to talk about, you know, some of the ideas I have uh, described in, in, in my book. And, uh, and I also want to thank you for the wonderful podcast you have had in the past. Um, uh, for those of you listeners who haven't uh, listened to, to some of the others, I mean, Yes, they're long, but you get you get so much out of it and uh, truly inspirational. So thank you very much. Thank you. I really, really appreciate that, Thomas. And and I, I always get the comment, you know, they're they're long or boy, they're sure long. 
Um, it's true, but we want to go into the depth and substance, remove bias, and kind of get into the sense making. And more, more importantly, is uh, just the same with the shift of the world to going from this uh, siloed or linear approach to solving our global grand challenges. I want to really get into the depth or substance of some of the questions, unpack your views and your feelings and what you've put numerous amount of hours into your uh, into your book and into your works, as well as my other guests, that we really give it the respect and credit for your time and, and the journey that you've had. But now you've left us with your wisdom to unpack that and to give us that knowledge. And to tickle the surface or just do a TED talk or an elevator pitch on, on what that is not, uh, it is not uh, humane, but it's also not really to, to, to get into really understanding that. And so um, sometimes we repeat ourselves, sometimes it's a little bit long, but I think it's really worth it to, to have to have that and I appreciate it and you know like you said Julia von Winterfeld has been one of our podcast people and many other great authors and wonderful people that um, um, have spent years and decades working on things and thinking and networking and, and we need to give them a voice and we need to unpack that because what the way this whole podcast series started was with a good friend of mine John P. Strelecki, who wrote, um, he every, about every 26 minutes, he sells one of his books in Germany. He's written tons of books, The Why Cafe or yeah. um, Big Very Five cool. for Life. He says, <clears throat> if you want to be a success, if you want to uh, fulfill your dreams, your purpose, your passion, your purpose for existing, you need to find the who. It's not the why, the what, or Simon Sinek's why. It's find the who, find who has already done it, who has already lived it, who has unpacked it, who has written it, who has wrote it, who has been a success and learn all you can from them, talk to them and, and get into a deep dive and then use their wisdom and use their story to mentor you to get into the future or into that practice that you wanna do. We've been on this earth for a long time, uh, but in that, really short time of the big life of, uh, of our earth, we've made a big impact. And the way we can have uh, an exponential impact in a humane way is by applying those who've already done it before us, who've already had those thoughts. And, and you've mentioned a couple of the greats before that were already thinking in this direction, already moving. Let's put it into practice. Let's make it happen. And uh, I think any of those who want to find the who should join us in Lucerne. Absolutely. Absolutely. It would be wonderful. Thank you so much, Thomas. I appreciate it. You have a wonderful day. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye.